Hey folks, Sean from the Calling Out community, and today I have a question. Do you have peace? What about hope? Do you still have it? Are you having problems with people that you love? Or are you struggling with addictions that you are fighting a losing battle with? You know, some people plan a trip to the Magic Kingdom, Disneyland, and they take weeks to do it, but they spend five minutes thinking about where they're going to spend eternity with God's kingdom. Is that you? Are you finding yourself feeling like you're just at the end of it all? I got good news. Right now, all over the world, no matter where you may be today, you could be in one of the 11 time zones of the Russian Federation. You could be in the city of love, Paris, or one of the other equally beautiful locations in the Republic of France. Or maybe you're in one of the nations that makes up the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, or one of the British colonies, or maybe another member of the British Commonwealth. Maybe tonight you're sitting in one of the 50 United States of America. Or maybe you're one of the frozen chosen who've been blessed to live, as I do, in the Dominion of Canada. You know, it really doesn't matter where you may be today, no matter what country, every nation on earth. For you, it could be early morning and you're getting up facing a day today where you're really searching and you want to know, do you have peace with God? Or maybe for you, it's the darkest part of midnight, literally, or maybe in your heart, figuratively. It doesn't matter what time it is. As long as you're hearing my voice right now, it's not too late. You're not too old. It's not too far gone in your life. No matter what, God's always listening. He's always loving you. He's always waiting for you. And he wants you to call out to him. In fact, he's there with you right now. And the cross is God's plan to save us. He had a plan for our lives in order to reconcile us when we were still sinners. In fact, the Bible says that there is none righteous. Nobody on earth is good enough. No, not even one, Romans 3.10 says. The Bible also says, for all have sinned and come short of God's glory. No matter what you've done today to try to be good enough, Maybe you sing in the choir, maybe you are even a pastor of your church and you still feel like you're away from God. It's not too late for you. God has a plan. Sin has consequences. And the choices we make affect us down the road. Because the Bible says the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23a says. And therefore, just as through one man, Adam, sin entered the world and death and destruction and sickness and all came through sin. And so death spreads to all men because all have sinned. So nobody is immune. God looked down and he saw all of this destruction and sickness and sin in the world and he had a plan. Christ died to save us. And God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What a miracle that was. And today, you can be saved from all of those things that you've done. Every bit of guilt, all of your past, all of the terrible things you've thought and said and acted on. One of the most famous football players in the world wore John 3.16 under his eyes on January 8th, 2009 and became one of the largest Google searches in history. Over 94 million people searched for what that verse actually said in the Bible. And you've seen the signs probably at Super Bowls or maybe baseball games or maybe uh, basketball games along the way and you wondered what it meant. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave, boy did he give, his only son. That whoever believes in him is never going to die, but you'll have everlasting life. 
The process of salvation is very simple. In fact, Romans 10.13 says, Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's very straightforward, friend. But we need to be careful that we don't assume our actions are what saves us. Because Ephesians 2.8 says that it's by grace that you're saved through faith. When I was a kid, I learned that grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. In other words, it's nothing that you've done. You didn't deserve it. You haven't earned it. You've been given it as a free gift by grace, the grace of God. Not something that you could possibly have ever gained on your own by any other means. It is only a gift that God can provide through the work of Christ on the cross. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. In other words, you've heard it today. I've told you the verses that the Bible says about you. Now all you have to do is believe it and accept it. And it becomes or you a salvation moment. You can actually be saved from all of your past by just believing in those words. And folks, there are consequences for your sins, but there's also results for your salvation as well. Romans 5.1 says that, Therefore, having been justified by faith, that word justified means just as if I had never sinned. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus. That means that God looks at you today after you've accepted his son and he doesn't see any sin in your life whatsoever. You could even talk to him about your past sins and he won't know what you're talking about because all of that has been washed away from his mind on purpose. He's determined to do that in order to see you as pure and holy. That's an amazing thing. In fact, the Bible says that the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He gives it to you without any cost to you whatsoever other than your life. <laughs> But you don't have to have any money for this one. You don't have to have intelligence. You don't have to have fame or popularity or being with the right people. You just have to accept what Jesus has said and it's all yours. The Bible says that there is no more condemnation for people who are in Christ Jesus. God will not condemn you in the future for the things you've done in your past if you accept him now as your savior. In fact, he goes on to say that I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, or demons, or principalities we call them, or powers. Um, really, there's no height that you can reach. There's no depth you could fall into. Nothing in the world can stop you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Absolutely nothing. Thank you for listening. And now I have one more question. Will you make a decision for Jesus Christ today. And by the way, you actually will make a decision for or against him today because a maybe is also a no. After all, God doesn't promise tomorrow to anybody. He only promises today and eternity. And he didn't ask you to figure everything out. He only asks you to trust his word and trust his power to help you. So anticipating hoping that you will make a decision for Christ. I'm going to lead a prayer and you'll see it on the screen. You can join along with it. As the Bible says, when you call on the name of the Lord, you can be saved. This can be your moment right now today. You can repeat it out loud with me if you like, or just pray it silently in your room or wherever you might be. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died for my sin and that you raised him to life. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as Lord from this day forward. Guide my life and help me to do your will. I pray this in Jesus' mighty name Amen. If you've just prayed that prayer with me, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. We are very thrilled that you have made this decision. Would you take a moment and just send me an email? Let me know. We have some material that we can send to you to help you in your Christian walk and 
um, we would just be thrilled to also hear the news. Um, I also have some links in my uh, description as well as here for how to get a free Bible, whether it's online version or uh, an app for your phone, uh, an audio Bible that you can listen to in your car or when you're jogging or wherever. And of course, if you want a printed version, you can get one. There's the addresses for Canada and the U.S. And next and most importantly after that, um, finding a good Bible-believing church. There's a lot of churches out there that don't believe the Bible anymore, and you don't want to be a part of any of that. Uh, there's no point in making a commitment for Christ if you're not going to be able to be uh, in any way discipled along the way. So we've got a link there for uh, a church finder. I uh, typed in the address for my personal area of, uh, in Canada and my home church came up so I was very glad to see that. So I know it works uh, and uh, it should be useful for anybody especially in North America but possibly around the world as well. So please uh, avail yourself of that. If you have any questions you can leave them in the comments. Um, we do encourage you to once you get your Bible to read a bit of it every day and pray uh, a little bit every day. Talk to God. It's a conversation between you and Him. It's the way you get to know Him. There are Bible reading guides that you can download for free online that will help you read through the Bible in a whole year, um, which sounds like uh, not a lot, but it's a lot of reading <laughs> to do it in one year, but it can be done. And last and most importantly, I want to let you know that the next major world event in the Christian church is the return of Jesus Christ for his church. We didn't get a chance to talk about that today, but please subscribe to this channel because we're going to be talking about a lot of those things over the next few months. There are some major prophetic signs of the times that point to the return of Jesus Christ that would not happen in any other time period but now, today. So we know that Jesus is returning soon for his church, and I'm so glad that you're going to be part of that because we'll be able to meet you there. If I don't see you before and we don't get to talk uh, in this world or on this planet beforehand, I'll see you in heaven. Take care and God bless.